take a look around and you'll see a multitude of different insects and bugs. But what species are they? Join me to find out. In this video I will show you two methods for catching insects and bugs in your garden. I will then discuss the findings with Dawn Fielding, a wildlife gardening officer at the Surrey Wildlife Trust. Welcome to my garden. It covers almost one acre and contains a variety of different habitats. In order to discover what different species are lurking where, we will sample three different habitats. The wild area, the flower bed, and the dark area. Here's a map to help. It will show where a pitfall trap was placed and what habitat it was placed in. There were two wild, two flower bed, and two dark pitfall traps. But first, what really is a pitfall trap? A pitfall trap is basically a hole in the ground that an insect falls in to be collected from later. You only need four things for this. A suitable container to put in the ground for the insect to fall in, a top to cover the container to make it more alluring, a trowel to dig the hole, and a suitable place to put it. So for this one, I've chosen under my mum's garden bench. <laughs> So having found a suitable location, first you dig the hole and then you lower the container to this into the hole. At this point you need to cover in the sides so that any insect will actually go into your container rather than skimming off around the sides. <laughs> I would then recommend that you put some small twigs and a bit of earth in. This is to give invertebrates that fall in somewhere to hide. And then you need to put the lid over. And when you're putting the lid over, try and put a stone or something to prop it up slightly. The lids there more sort of show that it's dark to attract something towards it. The traps were then left for two days. So I got to work sampling the trees. So we've had a look at what lives on the ground, but what lives in the trees? To find it, you need just one big white sheet. First, you lay a white sheet on the ground underneath a tree. Then you shake the branches above to dislodge unsuspecting critters. Check the sheet and see what you've got. Oh, and it's better not to try this under an apple tree. It's been two days. Let's find out what we've caught. I don't know why I'm whispering. And just in here, there is another one. Let's see what we got. Ooh. Once collected, the traps were emptied into an identification tray. The trap contents were examined and critters identified. Here are the results. The dark area yielded just three species, many small fast spiders, a centipede and a multitude of small jumping things known as springtail. The flower area had more species. Two different types of beetle were recorded. Mm -hmm. The common that garden beetle with electra black oh, body and dark person. red hind limbs and the much larger violet ground beetle, a hunter of slugs and snails. A flat-barked millipede was also found. The wild areas presented the largest species diversity. The common garden beetle popped up again, alongside ants, snails, worms, spiders and woodlice. The wild areas showed the highest level of species diversity followed by the flower areas, and then the dark areas. I went to discuss these findings with Dawn Fielding from the Surrey Wildlife Trust. Dawn, what would what you, would you expect, expect us to find on the ground? On the ground um, it depends 
doesn't have rich soil is or mm -hmm. that kind of thing and how humus rich it is etc so if it's anything like my garden lots of woodlice worms mm -hmm. um, beetles that kind of thing maybe not as much as in the grass grassy area mm -hmm. on the ground why not as much as in the grassy area um, because there's less cover for the insects Vertebrates, so mm -hmm. they don't feel as safe. They're more at risk of predators, so birds can easily get to them. Whereas in in your grassy area, you should have found quite a lot of different kinds of vertebrates: spiders, beetles, and you know, other usual suspects. Are there any species that are endangered or that we should watch out for? Um, there's a huge amount of species mm. that are um, in trouble everywhere. Just if you can get some nectar rich yeah. flowers into your garden you'll be helping all those pollinators feed and that will help the ground species as well everything's part of the life cycle the mm -hmm. richer the richer you make a garden the more species you have in your garden the more different types of habitats so shady areas sunny areas flower beds long grassy areas mm -hmm. ponds and the more species you'll get into your right. space Brilliant. thank you very much for talking okay. to me so there you have it Using pit bull traps, we have discovered what may be hiding in your garden. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it.